Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created with Phaser 3. Previously, we went ahead and created a new battle menu component uh, that's going to be used for displaying our menu options as well as the monster's attack options and some text of what's happening in the battle uh, while we transition between our states. If you missed the previous videos, there'll be links in the video description to the source code up to this point, as well as the complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up. So let's get started. All right, so now that we have our new battle menu class, what we're going to do is before we add our next feature, we're going to go ahead and improve our developer experience. And we're going to do that by adding in some JS doc types uh, to our class and some of our private properties. And what this will do is it's going to tell our code, our IDE, that what a particular type is on these methods. And then that way, when we're typing uh, in our editor, we'll get our IntelliSense and our auto complete as well as our phaser docs while we're working and overall this will just improve our developer experience so as an example uh, right now in our battle text game object lines if i want to call the set alpha uh, method our ide is not aware of it but if i tell vs code that this is a phaser uh, text game object then that will go ahead and auto populate uh, so to do this uh, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to import our phaser library uh, so we're going to do import phaser from we'll do dot 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 slash one more and we'll do our lib and we're going to do our phaser.js file so then what we can do is on our properties, we can go ahead and add a JS doc type. All right, and so to add in our JS doc types, uh, what we do is we use a special comment um, and we use a special uh, annotator here uh, called at type. Uh, so out of the box, VS Code has support for JS doc and it understands this uh, special type of comment. And when you provide this, uh, VS Code will go ahead and infer the type based on what we specify here. So inside our brackets, if we reference our phaser library and then we reference our phaser scene, uh, so that's the type that this property is. So now when we hover over it, we'll see our editor is inferring that this is the type. And so then that way we reference this dot scene we gain all the IntelliSense options because it knows what that scene class has for properties, methods, and what's available to us. And we also get in the documentation. All right, so as I mentioned, uh, this is built into VS Code by default. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more about JS Stock, uh, there is a great uh, website resource here that will go ahead and help you get started. Uh, but for now, that's out of the context for this video series. Uh, all we'll be doing with JS Stock is we'll just be adding in our type definitions like this, and then that way we'll just get our IntelliSense uh, inside our IDE. Uh, but this is a great resource if you do want to learn more. All right, so now that we know how to add in our JS Stock comments, what we're going to do is we're just going to add this type to each of our properties on our class. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to paste it a few times. And then what we're going to do is we'll update our types. So our container will be a phaser game objects dot container. And then same thing here, we'll do game objects dot container. And then this will be a game object and it's going to be a text game object. All right, perfect. So now uh, for any of our private properties, we should have a type when we hover over it. And when we try to access our properties and our methods, uh, we should get our IntelliSense. Uh, so another thing you can do with your js.comments is you can actually specify what the types of your arguments are uh, to things like your methods and your constructor. And so to do that, what you can do is if you add in the same slash star star, um, you can go ahead and add in your js.comments. Uh, so when it is a parameter, you want to use the at param like this. And then what you can do is inside your bracket, you specify your type. So this is a phaser.scene. And then you'll have your param, uh, what that variable is. And you also have the option to go ahead and specify some additional documentation, um, which will be shown when you try to create this instance. So if I just do the phaser3 scene, the battle menu will be added to. 
All right, so to see an example of this, if we come back to our battle scene, uh, when we create our battle menu, uh, if we hover over it, you'll see now when we go to specify our arguments, it's actually giving us our docs and tips of what it's expecting. So we're expecting a parameter called scene, and this uh, gives us the doc that we specified here, so our comment gets shown here. And so this just makes it a, a lot better while we're working uh, with our code base. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and add back this. All right, so real quick, we're going to jump over to our battle scene, and we're just going to go ahead and add a JS doc comment to our battle menu here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this, we'll come to our battle scene, we'll come above our battle menu, and we're just going to go ahead and change our type. So what we'll do is we'll do our battle menu, and now anytime we reference our battle menu property, uh, we know it's an instance of battle menu. All right, so by adding in our js.comments, it makes our experience a lot better, but there's all the other benefits as well. Uh, so it can improve the readability of our code. Um, by adding in these comments to our functions, our variables, and our classes, um, it helps us provide better context and explanation of what our code is actually doing. And so this is a great reference if we ever need to come back to our code in the future. So remember what we were trying to achieve. It's also great if anyone else is going to be working on your code, because then you can communicate that to other developers developers through your js.commons. Um, and the other benefit, as we saw, is with our IDEs, uh, we get a just much better developer experience. Um, so typically, uh, in smaller code bases, it's not as beneficial uh, because we don't see the benefits as greatly. Uh, but as our code base gets more complex and more large, it can be very difficult to understand what each piece of code is trying to do. Um, so it's just, it'll be better overall for us in the long run. All right, so with that, that brings this video to an end. Uh, in our next video, uh, we're gonna pick back up working on our battle menu and we're we'll gonna start adding in our player uh, interactivity. So then that way we'll display a cursor uh, so a player can navigate around our menu and then select our options. Uh, so as a reminder, there's a link in the description of this video to the completed source code for this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please see some of the links on your screen now.